Welcome. This is Information Service Engineering Lecture Number 9, Knowledge Graphs, Part 4. This now is the part of the lecture. We are for the first time going to program or write a program and access a knowledge graph and manipulate knowledge graphs. Okay, how are we doing that? First of all, the architecture of knowledge graph driven applications, usually accessing some knowledge graph on the web, are um, implemented as follows. So what you need as required components first is some kind of a local RDF store. You see that here. This is for caching your results or also then as a permanent storage on your site. Then, <coughs> sorry, of course you need some logic, which means this is the program that you implement, all the algorithms that are then somehow accessing and manipulating the data. And of course you have to present this data then to the user. This is here the user interface the business logic, you know, this of course is not really knowledge graph specific. You need this in any other application that you are going to program to. And then of course you need two things. One is a so-called data integrator or data integration component. This is uh, mandatory or let's say uh, its purpose is to get data directly from the web. So this means you are accessing data on the web via this kind of a data integrator or Another way how to use this component would be then somehow to access a kind of semantic search, uh, a semantic web search index. So this is then a semantic indexer where you access the index to get access finally then to some web of data data set or something like that. And here on the lower right corner, again, you need some means or some component to republish your data, which means um, this is then something to write back your application dependent data into the web of data. So this doesn't look very much more complicated than an average web application. The only thing is, of course, you need access to some kind of RDF store, be it internally or you access outside some data on the web, which is then, of course, um, usually available in the form of linked data, for example. Okay, now let's come to terms. How do we proceed? So the easiest way, of course, to access uh, knowledge graphs, be it on the web or in your program, is simply use a suitable library. So there are RDF libraries or Sparkle libraries for many kind of programming languages. You see here a few listed. So for example, there is one for uh, implementing Sparkle on JavaScript. There is also for PHP, for um, C Sharp, for Java. However, I mean, for, for sake of simplicity, we are using here Python. And uh, the first thing I'm going to show you here is the use of RDFLib, which is a Python library to uh, access, create and manipulate uh, RDF data with Python. And then we are going to use the Sparkle wrapper to access a data repository outside um, somewhere in the semantic web or in the web of data and then to manipulate this data with Sparkle. Okay, so first thing we are going to do here, our very first knowledge graph programming example, we want to access RDF with the help of the RDF lib. And our simple task is simply, we are going to read in some RDF graph, we are going to display that graph and we are going to manipulate it. Okay, for that, simply follow the link you see here. I have prepared this. You can see this then here in the browser and we have a Google Colab notebook for you, which I will present you a brief walkthrough now. Okay, so let's see. What are we going to need? Um, we need the RDF flip here for working with RDF and for the visualization part, I'm using two other libraries. You can visualize it in any way you want. So this comes quite handy. Pi.plus and GraphWits are two uh, nice visualization packages with which, especially with GraphWits, you have an easy way to display graphs. And of course, RDF is nothing else but a graph. But for that, of course, first thing we have to do is we have to install them here on the Colab notebook. Okay. That went well, so no error message, nothing else. And then we import here RDFLib. We need, of course, we want to access here uh, the graph and the namespace um, 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 objects. 
And what we want to do is here in namespace, we want to import specific namespaces, like for example, for Dublin Core, for RDF, for FOF, or some, some other. These are already predefined namespaces. And we want to access here, for example, URIs. We want to access blank nodes. And of course, we want to deal with literals. Therefore, we also um, importing exactly these packages here. And um, yeah, the rest here is simply for the sake of visualization. Okay, so let's import the stuff. That was also rather quick. And this is nothing else but a helper function. You can analyze this later on if you want to. So this is simply for visualizing RDF graphs. And here I'm using the libraries I was just speaking of which. So now let's start with the first linked data or RDF related task. First, let's create uh, create an RDF graph. And we take simply the one that we have here in the example of lecture number seven. Follow this link, you get to lecture number seven. And the graph is given as a turtle serialization. You see this here in the next code box. So what we are doing first is we create G and say this is a graph. Of course, graph, this comes here from, um, and you see here, it's also explained here in the Colab notebook. This comes here from the RDF lib library. We are creating an RDF graph. And we are creating this using turtle. So our turtle data that we define here is exactly now here the turtle based example that we had from the slides in lecture number seven. And what I do then is here simply I use the method parse and I say parse which data the data is the turtle data we have here and I tell it here yeah the format that you have to use here is of course turtle. So let's do this and what I do here I simply read in the graph. Here it is. We don't see it. Of course, it's not really in that sense visualized. What you can do, of course, then here is you can simply print out all of the triples. So in Python, you have here um, a for loop and you loop here for subject, predicate and object in G and you print simply all subject, predicate and object triples that you find here in G. So we have all this here and it's stored in the graph in terms of triples. And let's see how they look like. And you see here, yeah, this is a huge list of triples. And you see here we have, uh, what do we have here? Um, we have a discoverer, uh, which uh, is a property and you have here a range definition, for example, and the range of discoverer is a person and so on. So you can read it here and scroll through it. Of course, this kind of, um, serialization or, uh, or visualization is uh, rather crowded and it's not easy to read. So therefore we try some other things. First thing what we can do, for example, is um, we can select another, a different serialization format. So with the serialize um, option or method here in G, you can, for example, express or print everything here again in turtle or also in um, RDF XML. Let's do this simply here. And of course, yeah, we don't have a nice formatting here, but the first thing again is turtle. You see first prefixes are defined here. And then it's exactly the same syntax you had here. The only thing is um, it's not printed line by line. Everything is printed here in one line. And you see here in the second line, this is then of course here an XML file. And this is the serialization format as RDF XML. Since, as I have said, this is rather crowded, let's visualize the stuff. And this is the nice little routine I, I had here in the beginning of this Colab notebook. Let's do that and see what it helps. And you see this looks, of course, quite nice. So what we have here, we have carbon dioxide, the type of type uh, carbon dioxide is greenhouse gas, the discoverer Jan Baptist van Helmont and Joseph Black. One is physicist, the other is chemist, both are scientists. And we have here discoverer, which is of course here the property that has been used here. And the uh, discoverer is a property which has a range and it has a domain. And uh, yeah, of course it's a class like greenhouse gas. It's also a class. So this is what I call already a nice visualization. Okay, we can furthermore look up information for a given URI. So what we have here in our namespace, so if we look at the turtle file again, so you see here, we have here as a, a default uh, prefix, we have here um, the namespace example.org slash climate, and then we have a hash sign. 
what we can do now here is we can look up information of a specific URI. So Joseph Black, you see this URI of Joseph Black also written here. And here I can assign a variable, exactly the value of that URI. So we are accessing via URI ref exactly this URI. And then what we are doing here is we are simply printing then out what we have here. So the predicate objects for the subject Joe. So we see then with what it is uh, connected to. So this is then data or information about exactly this URI. And we see here that we have here predicate object, which means we have here the property RDF schema label. And we have here um, the literal Joseph Black in English. Or another thing we have here, we have a comment and the comment says uh, discovered CO2. So you see, this is all the information that is available for Joe Black that you also see here as a comment here and here as the name in the note. But you can access it and use it then here as in this variable um, for whatever use you come up with in your program code. Okay, so this was simply reading, visualizing, accessing. Now we are going to manipulate our graph a little bit and we add some information. Okay, first of all, we are using namespace. Here, this is our default namespace that we define here. We call it n. And this is an example.org slash climate hash that we had here. Then we want to add a few information. So for example, a literal. So first, the, a birth date. And we say here, a uh, birth date is a literal of the type XSD type. And then we have name, which is a string literal. So literal, and then here in double quotes, we pass the name Joe Black. And then we say age, it's also a literal 24th. So that's an integer. And let's say the height, which is a literal 172.4, which is a float in Python. Okay, so next thing we are assigning another variable here, Jan, which is the URI ref of uh, Jan Baptist van Helmont, also from our example. And here we give a se second name, also literal Jan van Helmont. So here again, we are passing a string. So now we are adding RDF triples in the following way. So this simply works by G, that's our graph, and we add, and then we add here a triple. And here we say to the node Joe, we add RDF type. You see here RDF is one of the predefined namespaces we have imported beforehand. And we are using type from RDF and from the namespace fof, this is a person. So we say then Joe is of type person. Again, we say Joe has fof name also from the fof namespace. We adapt the property name here and we give it the name, the literal that we have created above. Then we come up with age, which is a property from our own example namespace, height also from our example namespace and birth date also from our example namespace. And then we add for the second node for Jan Baptist van Helmond, this is Jan, our variable Jan, we add here again fourth name and that's name two. And then we just look at all of the triples like above and also we try to visualize the entire stuff again. So let's see. Yeah, we see here all the triples. Also the new triples must be in there. It's a bit difficult to see, but you see it then easily in the visualization. So these are the additional information that we have added for Joe Black. Like we have here the age, and this of course is now of type integer, birth date, which is of type uh, XML schema definition date. And we have height, which is here float or even double. And then we have the name, which is Joe Black. And we have uh, the RDFS comment from previously already co-discovered CO2. And again, from this original namespace that we are using, we have here, uh, no, NS1 is um, in the end then um, the fourth namespace. Um, so we have here Jan van Helmond. To see this, we, see, we don't see here what exactly is NS1, the namespace. For that, we have to look in the uh, turtle output simply. Okay, so that was exactly what we did previously, which means we have read uh, a graph, we have um, accessed the graph, we have visualized the graph, we have now added some new things. So we did graph manipulation. What we also can do, we can directly apply Sparkle on this local graph. And this you do simply here by querying 
the graph g so query is another method that is uh, included here and there you simply copy a sparkle query and what i do here is i try here to select the discover label where carbon dioxide so i want to see who has discovered the carbon dioxide and i the label that i want to return here is the fourth name which then should be according to the graph here joe black and jan van helmont and then what i do i simply print out all rows of the result the result is of course here the list of things or uh, that um, is returned here in uh, my for, from my method uh, query on the graph okay and then i print simply co2 was discovered by and then row by row i give the result which is here only a single um, literal for each row let's do this and you see CO2 was discovered by Jan van Helmont and CO2 was discovered by Joe Black. That's it. Okay, so this was our very first programming example in Python. Let's switch back to our presentation. And here now we are going for a second example where we are going to use the Sparkle wrapper library. The Sparkle wrapper, li wrapper library sorry, is again also a library for Python. And what we will do is we will simply access linked data via a Sparkle endpoint over the web. So for simplicity, we are choosing DBpedia since we can read the labels there. We will do a simple Sparkle query. However, we have to think of something. So we have to think of a suitable example task. The example task that I have selected for you works in the following way. So what we are going to do is we build a simple application that looks for famous people having their birthday today. And our famous people we are looking for are scientists. And of course, this should be based in on DBpedia. So we want to have uh, something like a calendar for scientists whose birthday is today. Okay, this means we have to create a list of scientists whose birthday is today, including some additional information. Like for example, we want to know in which year are they born. Uh, we want to have a short description. If available, we want to have a picture. And to make things nice, we want to create a simple web page, but of course only locally here on our computer. However, we can access then also this HTML page that we will create with our browser. And then it looks nicely in the browser. So this is the task we are going to do. And how we, are we going to do that? We will use Python, including the Sparkle Web Wrapper Library. This is difficult to pronounce. Okay, first of all, we have to see what information is available in DBpedia and how it looks like to come up with a suitable Sparkle query. For that, let's go to our Famous example again, Joseph Fourier. We are looking at the web page of Joseph Fourier at DBpedia. You can simply follow the link here. And what we are going to do here is, of course, we are selecting what are we going to need. So we will need, for example, the birth date. What is the property? How is the name of the property for the birth date? We will see this here on the, Wiki, uh, on the DBpedia page, for example. Or if we want to have the picture, what is the property with which the picture here is connected and so on and so on. So this usually you find out simply by clicking here on the web page of Joseph Fourier in DBpedia and analyzing the properties as well as the values and select the stuff that you need. That's the first thing. And for that, of course, we have to come up with a suitable Sparkle query. So what kind of entities are we looking for? It's clear that we are looking for scientists. So the RDF type should be DBO scientist. You will see if you look at the web page of Joseph Fourier that he is also of type DBO scientist. Okay, what information do we need from these entities? First of all, the birth date. The graph triple pattern that we need for that, of course, is then scientist, DBO birth date, birth date. So you see here, this is exactly the property that we need. And of course, the scientist and the birth date, they will be a variable. Next thing, we need the name. So we are looking for the RDF label. And then 
we are looking for some description, which is usually here uh, available under RDFS comment. Okay, and since not all of them are assumed to have a picture, this will be then optional, the graph pattern, and there our scientist has some DBO thumbnail, also something you can find out on the webpage at DBpedia, and then we are adding simply this. Any other filter criteria? Of course, the birthday should be today, which means you need a filter expression, and this filter expression, haha, yeah, again, of course, we are using RDFS label, you remember that? For that, of course, we have to strict labels again to English because otherwise you get labels in many different languages. So this would then probably too many entries and you don't want to have that. And the other thing, of course, it's the birthday. And either then you take today's date into account and encode this in the Sparkle query. However, for that, you have to change your Sparkle query every day or you have to ask for the current date in your Python program and then format it accordingly that you can use it in Python. So for example, let's assume we would have uh, the 3rd of July, then you would look something like that. So you would look something that um, the birth date that you select here from our dbpedia triple contains the substring 0703. That would be the most easiest thing, so simply to do this substring selection. However, dbpedia is implemented on a virtuoso Sparkle endpoint and they have some built-in functions. So this is not uh, the same for all of the available Sparkle endpoints for dbpedia. This function that you hear C exists and this BIF means built-in function and car date, just guess, means current date. And what you do here is simply look at the current date and there you are starting simply at the sixth uh, um, letter and, and there uh, there is the month and of course then the day in the usual ISO formatting of the date. And you are simply looking for the substring exactly at that point. So this is a built-in function for the current date. Let's do this again then here on or directly in uh, dbpedia. So I click on that link and you see here exact our Sparkle query that we are trying. So just remember Sparkle. What we have want to have there is we want to have a birth date. We want to have a thumbnail, so a picture. We want to have the scientist that we are dealing with. So this is the subject then yeah, there, its name and a description. So first of all, the scientist should be of type scientist. Moreover, we want to have the birth date. This is the second, uh, the third line here. Then we want to have the name as a label and we want to have the description here. This is the RDFS comment. First filter condition would be then um, the language of the name should be English and the language of the description should be English. Next one, what we are doing here exactly is um, we are looking for birth dates and the birth date length should be larger than six because sometimes the birth date is not given exactly um, as uh, let's say uh, uh, an ISO format date. Sometimes there is crap in it and, and therefore we are simply looking for dates which are really dates and which are here longer than six, so where you have more than just the, uh, the birth year. And then the next condition would be simply, we are looking here that the uh, later part here, starting at position six in the string of birth date, so the month and um, the day, they are the same like in the current date, everything starting from position six, six. So this is then the current month and the current day. So this is the filter condition. And of course we want ifs available also to have a thumbnail. And to order it nicely, we can order this of course by the birth date in ascending order. So then the oldest guy is in front. Okay, so let's execute the query. And you see here the oldest one starting in 1676. And you see also here that today it's the 28th of uh, May. So this is the recording date. So otherwise it would have been secret to you. 
And uh, this is the first one and the last one. Let's look at the last one here. 1972, some scientist has been born. The name is Enrique M. Pereira. So I don't know the guy, but he has birthday today, which is interesting. What did he do? A Portuguese conservation biologist. He's a professor at the Martin Luther University in Halle Wittenberg in Germany, head of the Biodiversity Conservation Research Group. Congratulations. So this is interesting. This is exactly the Sparkle query that we want to do. And this Sparkle query we want to carry out now in our example program. And via Python, we want to format it nicely in terms of an HTML page and then simply print it out as HTML. Okay. So let's first get back here and then, okay, let's switch to our code example. Again, you have the link here to the notebook and I switch to the notebook. So this is notebook number two. And here we are going to use the Sparkle wrapper library or the Sparkle wrapper package. First, of course, we have to install it. So that takes a bit and here we have it. Um, overall, since we are dealing here with date time in Python, we also need the date time library. This is for date formatting and interpretation. And of course the Sparkle wrapper. And here we are going to import um, from the Sparkle wrapper. Um, the output here should be, um, we have several possibilities to get them back from Sparkle, for example, JSON, XML, N3 or RDF. But this is only for example we will not need this later on okay we will access dbpedia for that we have to know the dbpedia sparkle access point this is exactly the address when you are going to the dbpedia sparkle access point what you have then in your uri and so this is the sparkle access point of dbpedia um, and we have to define this which means in the sparkle wrapper library here we define a variable spa sparkle, which is a sparkle wrapper, and we give it here the sparkle endpoint we are accessing. So this is the first thing we are doing. Okay. Next comes the sparkle query. So for our sparkle variable we have here, um, we are using the method set query, and there we are simply copying the entire sparkle query as you have seen it before in our example directly on DBpedia. Here then, the Sparkle query um, is um, executed, but before that, I um, simply fix the output or define the output format. And here, this is JSON. So you see, therefore, I defined or I also imported here the JSON library so that we are able, uh, which is part here of the Sparkle wrapper, so that we get here the return format JSON. So um, what we have then here. Our results will be, and now I execute the query, which is then directly converted um, into JSON um, here in the variables result. Okay, so this is then the variable which contains all of the results, and this we are going then to manipulate later on. And this is given in terms of a, of a kind of a, a dictionary where we have always, you know, like Sparkle queries are usually formatted you can then access, of course, the name of a variable and then the content of a variable. Okay, so you see nothing happened so far. We now have to access everything which is here in results. So results now will be formatted in our HTML according to be displayed nicely in a browser. So we creating now our HTML output, which means, first of all, we are creating an HTML header and a title for the, our web page. And then what we are going to do, we extract a uh, weekday month, day of the month, uh, so that we can format it nicely. So date is then today's date. And then we format it accordingly that we have first the weekday, then we have the month, and then we have the day for which we are displaying that. And then we, we print here scientific birthdays off. And then here we format accordingly here the current date. So then we will have a nice headline which says scientific birthdays of the 28th of May. Okay. Um, since we are doing plain HTML and we are using not much of CSS files and stuff like that, we are simply here using 
the HTML uh, basic building block. So this is here an unordered list that we are creating. And now we are accessing here the results. And the results are, first of all, of course, the result and then the binding. So where, where the results are bound to. And uh, for that, we simply ask if scientist, so that's the name of the variable, is in the results. We are um, using or we are creating a URL from what is here the scientist URL. And uh, we add here the according uh, namespace of Wikipedia. Oh, this, is, this is interesting, which means we are creating a link here. Uh, which links to the Wikipedia page of exactly the name here of the scientist, which we have here in the value of scientist. And we are looking here for the very last slash, and this is then the suffix of the scientist. So this is for Joseph Fourier, is, this is Joseph underscore Fourier. And this is then connected here to Wikipedia, which means this creates simply a link to a Wikipedia page. You will see then for what we will need that. If scientist as a variable is not in our Sparkle query in the results, then this will be substituted. The URL will be substituted by none. Okay, next one, we are looking for the variable with the name name in the results. So if there, then a new variable with the name name, then will be simply the value of exactly that name in the first row, we go, we, because we go row wise through all these results. And then the next thing is the same with birthday. So we are looking for the variable birthday in results. And then we are taking here the value of the birthday. If it's not available, then of course it's none. Then we are looking for the description in the very same way. And we are looking for the thumbnail in the very same way. The only thing, if there is no thumbnail available, what we are doing there is we are trying to display here a simple picture of a question mark, which then simply tells us, okay, there is no uh, there is no no thumbnail available. Of course, you can do this in any other way you please. This is not super nice. This is simply a very primitive web page. Okay, the next thing then is um, we have to uh, pass the date as a date time. So what we do here, we take the birth date, and um, yeah, we want to have the year, the month, and the day, and what we print then. In the end, for the HTML representation you see here, so you see here how it's formatted. We have a list element and then in bold there is something and we will have here uh, the image source. We will have a specific size to the image. So all of the images should all, always be 60 pixels wide, not more, so that it looks or fits into a line. And then we will give you something what we print here with a uh, with a link. So we have here an href. This in the end will give a link, and uh, all of the rest you see here. What we print out here is in the end. So this here um, format dt year. We have first. So we we from date time we extract here the year part. We want to display the year. Then the picture will be um, replaced by a picture which is three hundred by sixty. And um, then we give the wiki URL, which then will be the link under the name of the scientist. So we'll see how this looks like soon. And then in the end, we will have a description. We do this for all rows in the result. And then what we are doing is we are simply closing the list here. And then we are closing the HTML page. That's it. So let's simply do this. Let's run it and let's look at the result. And you see here, let's start at the beginning. We have an HTML page created, scientific birthdays of today. And then comes in the body, scientific birthdays of Friday, May 28th. So this is today. And then you see here all the list entries in this unordered list, starting with the simply the year. So we start here with 1676. And then comes the image of the guy or the, the woman that is here uh, depicted. And then comes, as you see here, a link to the Wikipedia page. And here the text, which is linked. So this is the name of the guy, Jacopo Riccati. And then comes the description. Jacopo Riccati, you're born 28th of May, 1676, uh, died 15th of April, 1554. And he was a Venetian mathematician and jurist from Venice. 
except you see that's quite nice however of course we would like to display this nicely in a browser so we do now exactly the same we are using here another library the files library because what we are doing here is we are writing this into a file which has the name birthday html so let's do it again and you see here what happens here we are downloading birthday html i will download it directly here so let's try it out i will download it here on my local computer you see here download has finished I simply click on it and voila this is our not so nicely formatted uh, web page with the scientific birthdays of friday may 28 and we have here the first guy Jacopo Rigatti and you see here more guys let's see ah Luis Agassiz so uh, this guy is interesting so this is a swiss uh, glaciologist who um, came up with the idea of ice ages Okay, and of course there are many other people that you probably have never heard of, but you see these are all the scientists which are referred to here in Divipedia. Just have a look whether I know some other guy here, some from the younger guys, but it doesn't look like that. Of course you could do this also with actors, with musicians or any other kind of people you will find here in DBpedia. Okay, so this was our example for Python code in a collaborative notebook, scientific birthdays, making use of external data, here external Sparkle endpoints and then doing something with it. Of course, then you combine exactly what you have here as a Sparkle result with the RDF lib and create, for example, RDF triples out of the Sparkle that you have here and then further on manipulate the graph that you are creating and making much nicer websites than we tried here now with this scientific birthday example. So here you see again on the next slide how it had looked like when I prepared the slides on May 19. So there were, of course, other people but simply try it out and then you will see how it works. Okay, that were our two RDF and Sparkle programming examples based on Python. Now, according to our table of contents, the lecture would be over. However, we have another section, which is an excursion. So this is an addendum because we are constantly talking about knowledge graphs here but nobody so far referred to the graph properties of this knowledge graph. The knowledge graph is a graph. So therefore, in the next excursion, in the next section of the lecture, we will briefly talk about what it means that we are dealing with a graph and how we can make use of the properties of graphs according to graph theory. But this you will see then in the next part of the lecture.